Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video, we're going to do the first styling on this Prunus Incisor Kojo No Mei on the Fuji Cherry. Let's get started. I bought this Prunus Incisor for half price at B&Q, which is a DIY store here in the UK. And it has a pretty decent garden centre section to it now, with lots of peat-free compost. Thank you, B&Q. Not sponsored. <laughs> this little tree should have been £16.99, but I got it for £8.49. And it already came in this quite fun pot. So they're obviously trying to give it this kind of eastern bonsai sakura kind of feel to it. But I want it for an actual bonsai. Now I do already have a little Kojo no Mei, which is considerably smaller than this. There's quite a tangle of branches here and I'm not quite sure where I want to go with it yet but I have got some really nice movement coming right down here at the base of the trunk and up into the first primary branches so I've got quite a lot to work with which is really nice and the first thing I do want to do before I decide fronts or anything is I need to take off a little bit of this soil surface and have a look and see what the root system is doing. Now it's only mid-July so it is absolutely not the right time to be doing root work on this tree. We just literally want to take off just the top bits of soil and moss to start to understand what the root system is doing and how it will flare from the trunk into the roots so that that will help us to make good decisions on where the front of the tree will be because you want to have your your best roots towards the front in an ideal world you've got a completely fabulous circular root system but uh, <laughs> this is not an ideal world this is bonsai <laughs> i don't think i'm going to have to remove too much soil because as you can see i've already got roots happening right up here on the surface some of these are obviously going to be dead but um, not all of them so what I want to do with my bamboo is just start to remove some of this moss we can save this moss we can put it back on the surface we can use it on other trees Now, I've done nothing to this tree since I got it, which is very unusual for me. I did manage to sit on my hands while I uh, waited the right time of year to do something to it. I let it flower in the spring and it was really pretty. And just here you can see I've got a little tiny ornamental cherry. <laughs> I'm just going to take my time doing this bit absolutely no reason to rush this the compost in here is quite dense very organic not what we would want to use for bonsai at all but as I say, we are not doing root work today. I'm just trying to get back to that top layer of roots. But it's useful to know that come the spring, this would be a good tree to think about repotting because the organic nature of the compost here will just continue to break down in the pot environment and it will stop allowing airflow and moisture to get to the tree in the most efficient way. 
I'm just gently scratching at the surface, loosening it up and helping those roots be visible. And you can see where the tree has kind of sunk in the middle. I guess it's kind of worked in my favour that somebody hasn't come along and dumped more compost on the top because it means that there's good integrity here in the, the bark on the trunk. It hasn't uh, softened or weakened from being underneath a layer of soil. It's taken me about 15-20 minutes to get to this point in the process and it's important not to rush this step. You don't know what you're going to find underneath the soil surface until you start removing compost. If you look back at my crab apple tree video you will see that I was faced with actually a double root system and I had no idea I had two root systems so it took me a, a minute to just kind of decide what was going to be best for the future development of the tree. If I had just seen these sorts of roots up near the surface and thought, oh well that's my that's my nabari, that's my my root flare, I'd have been quite wrong because actually I've got some really rather lovely roots coming out down here and that might mean that maybe I want to tilt the tree in a slightly different plane. It may be that I want to remove some of these higher up roots and go with what's happening a little below them. I did watch the video of a chap, oh bless him, he had got a young tree that he wanted to do some work on and he did the top and then he said right now I'm going to just repot it into this bonsai pot I'm not going to do any root work A it didn't need to go into a bonsai pot at that point it was pure aesthetic to, to put it into a bonsai pot it would have been completely happy going into a nursery can to help build up trunk thickness but for some reason he didn't expose anything up here he just took the root ball and sawed through it leaving him with a depth that would have happily gone into a bonsai pot but as soon as he started trying to sort of move the compost about to, to make it smooth and sit in the pot he realized that he'd got very little root system left and he really regretted his action so for the sake of 20 minutes half an hour just do this just understand your roots you might see videos of the big bonsai names going at roots with paint spatulas or um, saws but they probably know that tree really very well so the risk of them doing any damage to anything important is very very minimal indeed so now we're going to have a little think about the shape of the trunk where the front might be compared to the roots that we have so having turned this round a few times on the turntable I actually think I rather like this as the front you've got the lovely roots cascading down it's probably the best the best root section I've got these other ones sort of come around these ones are a bit higgledy piggledy this is actually a really lovely section of root and the bonus is that the trunk has got really nice movement as well Let's see if I can tilt it Now 
Now, having said I'm not doing any root work, I, I, I'm just going to take this one off because it is pointing up into the air. Oh, and this one. Oh, and this one. Okay, yeah, anything that's going to be pointing out up out of the surface and is going to die anyway, I'm going to take off. I'm taking anything else off. I get the feeling that in the future I could maybe have this up against a rock or maybe encourage these roots to go over a rock. So I'm actually thinking I might slope the tree forward slightly so that this sort of falls down the bank with the, with the rock face behind rock face behind it. And that would help bring my canopy forward so that the tree nods to you. Okay, so I've removed nothing from underneath. I haven't disturbed underneath at all. There's been absolutely no sign of insect damage or um, bugs in the soil, like weevils and things. Just poked a tie down wire up through the drainage holes in this pot. We're just going to put it straight back in. I've angled the soil it's going into ever so slightly so that my nice roots have a little bit more space off the front of the pot. I'm just sitting the root ball on top and because I'm not doing any root work I'm not going to worry about trying to pass these up through the root ball. I'm just going to lay them across the root ball over a root that I think probably I'm going to be getting rid of anyway when we get to that point, not before. And I am going to twist the wires together and then you can just clip the ends off if they're too long. I've just tucked mine down into the soil. And then I'm going to backfill with some Akadama Lava Pumice mixture. This is approximately two parts Akadama, one part lava, one part pumice. I'm just going to take my chopstick again and encourage the soil components down. And this will begin to transfer the tree across from an organic compost into this more bonsai compost. We aren't attempting to break the particles down and really ram them in the roots. We just want to make sure there are no pockets of air in there, really big pockets of air. You still want air to flow. It's a balance. I'm always amazed how much bonsai compost you can work into a root ball, <laughs> even when you haven't actually taken that much soil out. So yes, in this first instance I have completely obliterated those roots. Those nice, pretty roots that I liked are now well and truly hidden, <laughs> but that's fine. They need to acclimatize to the new soil type and the idea that they're going to be exposed to a lot more air and moisture loss than they were when they were nicely tucked under that damp compost. Sometimes you choose a front for your tree and then after a couple of stylings you realise perhaps that wasn't the best front for the tree at all or something fundamental happens like a big major branch gets knocked off or dies back and it completely changes the design of the tree. That's okay, that's okay. 
for the moment I'm just going to mark my front with a little piece of my bamboo stick you'll probably barely see it but it's just there at the front and it's just going to remind me that's where I'm viewing the tree from I remember okay I've also just scattered the moss on as well and now we're going to get on to the major bit of work which is removing some of these branches and finding our tree now I've been looking at this tree as it's been going round and round and I am thinking that I want to follow this line up here gives me a nice branch that bends forward which is all good for the auspicious shape of the tree <laughs> if we want to think um, traditionally but I have got lots of whirls where there's lots of branches coming off from similar points and, and these two are right next to each other so I do need to get in and remove some of these we should always work on our bonsai trees from the bottom up so assessing the roots first is the best way to start a tree working out where that root flare is it's uh, oh, what does Ryan Neal call it something to do with um, it's something like what's going to give you the most resistance so what can't you change very easily So if you're going to have inverse taper, if you point your tree in a certain direction, then you know that you've got to point it a different way. And then once you've resolved that bit, you can move on to the next step. Where's the next problem area that you can or can't resolve very easily? And onwards up through the trees. Although we're going to be now removing branches and it's going to affect the canopy, the important bit is what's going on here where it meets the trunk. I don't need to worry about the twiggery, that will regrow. I need to worry about where these branches now make their junction with the trunk. Someone's going to correct me on that quote. I think it's quite a famous one. Uh, oh, I can't think what it is. It is something along those lines though. <laughs> So this is the front, here's our marker. This branch here is very definitely an eye poker. It is pointing right at you and would poke you in the eye if you were trying to look at this little tree. So we are going to take that off. I'm going to come back pretty close to the main trunk. That now leaves me with branch 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 and I also have branch which is related to this branch so this gives us a t-bar which we don't want and we've got this layering up of branches there's too much going on here so we could say let this be my first branch this will be my second branch this would be my third branch and then you would come on up the tree but I'm not actually sure I want this tree to be this low so I could say this is my first branch now the reason I would pick this one over either of these two this one is very thin especially in comparison to the nice trunk it doesn't really have enough weight to it this branch goes up and straight pretty quickly from the junction with the trunk whereas this one comes out and it meanders a little bit more I think this is a more interesting branch to keep than this one so of the pair of bar branches 
which will be causing an inverse taper in the trunk. It's pushing lots of hormone through here. Lots of uh, carbohydrates on water and it's all trafficking through here. And that's going to make that area swell. So we need to definitely reduce this down to the trunk and a branch. It's just the decision between which branch. Do it in stages. And because this one is so weak and weedy, I am also going to take this one off. I haven't taken that hard back to the trunk. I would like that to sort of die back naturally and compartmentalise itself. There is a shoulder in here where that trunk joined the branch. I would like that to form its own sort of callus and seal itself over so that I can then come back and remove the dead branch part without then affecting the trunk. Now I have also got up in here some dead bits of twiggery which I will take out because that's confusing the picture slightly. So I'll take that one and that one and two very small ones. That one And now I'm keeping this branch, and I think for three-dimensionality's sake I want to also keep this trunk. This one will be my leader, my prime trunk going up, but I also want to keep this one. I can start to drop it down and backwards a little bit, and it will help give me dimension at the back here. Which would then mean I remove this branch. I'm going to do that now. So for the integrity of the trunk I need to remove one or other of these two branches because they are right next to each other. They will cause inverse taper before too long. And I think for a sort of rotating branch pattern, if we call this branch one, this branch two, this branch three, this would then be branch four and this would be my, my leader. So I need to cut off this front one. That was absolutely unavoidable and it has left me with a very different tree to the one I started with. The lovely thing about Kojo no Mae is there's lots of dormant buds all the way along here. So it will bud back. I don't need any of these branches to be this long. I will be reducing all of them. So it doesn't hurt to start coming in and removing pieces. It's half past seven. I'm losing quite a bit of light now. I definitely want to try and encourage some of the buds further back to push out. So even just by simply taking the tips off branches, you are reducing that growth hormone, the auxin, and redirecting it to those other shoots. And by activating those, it may change our decisions further down the line for this little tree.
So I am trying to think about what would happen if I wired a certain piece. How would that movement affect the overall shape of the tree? And remember, this is nursery stock. This cost me £8.50. So it does give me the freedom to play with it a little bit and experiment and test test the boundaries of what this tree is able to put up with. I've got some three and a half mil aluminium wire here. I'm going to try and pair up these two branches with the wire. Apply some wire. Wow, this little Fuji cherry is a job of work and I am nowhere near finished and I'm losing the light. I think I might have to stop for today. I feel like I'm having a crisis. <laughs> I'm going to remove this branch. Everything I thought was going to be really simple has turned into a a bit of a mission. Uh, you know what they say about assumptions, don't you? It's now 20 to 9 at night. <laughs> I think I've finished. I certainly can't do any more to it today. I do struggle with wiring. I think mentally I try and make shapes that are random and end up making them all look the same somehow. Um, so it's taken me a little while to sort of figure out where exactly I want to position branches, um, how the wiring is going to work. I haven't wired everything. I did hear a couple of little splits, so don't get too attached to any of these branches because who knows, I may have to cut them off anyway. But, as I said before, what, what it will do by reducing the overall size is to actually encourage any dormant buds to now burst, which will in turn give us lots of new options. It is, however, very three-dimensional, which I'm pleased about, because sometimes 
I can make things look a little bit flat. I've moved my front view round by just a couple of centimetres. This front branch here was giving me some trouble. It, um, it was becoming a bit of an eye poker and then it was matching too much with this branch and it may be it may be that eventually this one goes, but I don't want to make that decision right at this moment. I think that's probably too early. So, there isn't a branch I haven't touched. <laughs> Everything's had at least the tip trimmed off it, if not wire attached, and a bit of shaping. We established the root plane and we're pretty sure we found this tree's front. So, yeah. That was about two and three quarter hours. <laughs> right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.